Coming up on today's episode of Airport Unlimited, Falcon Heavy Test fired at Kennedy Space Center. Crowdfunding saves pilots home. And Serial Stowaway returns to the air. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's January 29th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. SpaceX conducted a successful test fire of all 27 Merlin rocket engines on the Falcon Heavy last Wednesday at the Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A. After the test, SpaceX founder Elon Musk tweeted that the hold-down firing was good and that the first flight would be launching in a week or so. When it does launch, the Falcon Heavy will become the most powerful in operation, generating a liftoff thrust of 5.1 million pounds. Musk is working to manage expectations because a lot has to go right all at the same time. It requires the simultaneous ignition of 27 orbit-class engines. There's a lot that could go wrong there, he said. I encourage people to come down to the Cape and see the first Falcon Heavy mission. It's guaranteed to be exciting. There's a real good chance that the vehicle does not make it to orbit. I want to make sure to set expectations accordingly. The payload for the first test flight is Musk's personal cherry red Tesla Roadster, which is intended for an elliptical orbit that should take it as far as Mars. In a tweet last month, Musk said he loves the thought of a car drifting apparently endlessly through space and perhaps being discovered by an alien race millions of years in the future. After the break, celebrating 60 years of America in space this January 31st. The Bristel Light Sport aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics personal jet kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Late in the evening of January 31, 1958, the United States took its first step into space with the launch of Explorer 1 satellite from Cape Canaveral, Florida. The slender 30-pound satellite would yield a major scientific discovery, the Van Allen radiation belt circling our planet, and ushered in six decades of groundbreaking U.S. space science and human exploration. In commemoration of this achievement, NASA is supporting events in Florida, California, and Washington, D.C. to mark the 60th anniversary of the launch. Laguna Beach, California has settled its lawsuit against the FAA over commercial jet aircraft operations at John Wayne Airport. The city council filed the lawsuit because the Metroplex environmental document and record of decision appear to give the FAA broad discretion to adopt standard commercial jet departure and arrival procedures dramatically different than long-standing patterns that would potentially have a significant noise impact on Laguna Beach residents. Frasca International has launched a new lower-priced helicopter training device. The HTD is designed for helicopter air ambulance providers, airborne law enforcement, introductory turbine transition training, and ab initio flight schools. Frasca will display the HTD at Heli Expo, February 27th through March 1st in Las Vegas. The Frasca HTD comes standard with one aircraft configuration kit. 
The State Department has made a determination approving a possible foreign military sale to Belgium, a 34F-35 Joint Strike Fighter conventional takeoff and landing aircraft, for an estimated cost of $6.53 billion. The Defense Security Cooperation Agency delivered the required certification, notifying Congress of this possible sale last week. The government of Belgium has requested to buy 34 F-35 Joint Strike Fighter conventional takeoff and landing aircraft and 38 Pratt & Whitney F-135 engines. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Flyers are family or so we've always believed. An effort established on GoFundMe helped save the home of a pilot, his wife Tabitha and eight children including three adopted from foster care. Florida pilot Ron Callagher established the campaign on behalf of Josh Rosa, who was severely injured in an airplane accident over a year ago. He was a passenger in the airplane that went down. Rosa is in the airplane salvage business, and he was unable to work for some time. He fell behind on his mortgage payment and was being threatened with foreclosure. Callagher went to the Beach Talk community for his initial efforts. Josh is also an angel flight pilot. This effort is not a public effort or an internal effort. It is a Beach Talk Brotherhood Sisterhood effort, he wrote. We care for those around us by flying volunteer angel flights for the sick and needy. Both Josh and I are angel flight pilots, but we also care for one another. If a brother or sister falls, we pick them up. The effort raised enough money to prevent the foreclosure, and the roses were in their home for Christmas. After these messages, Serial Stowaway returns to the air. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Welcome back. For most of us, flying on an airliner means buying a ticket and dreading the security line. Neither of those things is true for 66-year-old Marilyn Hartman, who has been arrested for at least the 10th time for avoiding security and airline personnel to board an airliner. Hartman's most recent trip was from Chicago O'Hare to Heathrow in London. Somehow, she managed to get past TSA with no boarding pass or ID and blended in with passengers while boarding the airliner. While this is Hartman's 10th arrest for being a stowaway, she has slowed down some. She was arrested eight times in 2014, she was caught twice in two months in 2015, and also tried the stunt in California and Arizona. She even spent a year in jail for her repeated offenses and released on probation to a nursing home in December 2015. While it is not clear how she got past TSA, video cameras around O'Hare show Hartman wandering around the airport for two days before finally making it onto a flight. Once on board, she hid in the lavatory until she can find an empty seat. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.